and we're going to install the, uh, the the sensor cap. We're going to put it at a slight angle so we don't hit the sensor as we're turning on the hydrant. Then we're going to install the test sensor, which is clearly marked test sensor. And it's just a quick disconnect, and it snaps into place. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure this valve is open to release the air as we open the fire hydrant. And then we're going to go ahead and open the fire hydrant. And whenever you open a fire hydrant, you always want to start out with it slow. Let the air bleed out. And then just let it run for a minute or so to make sure you get all the air out of the hydrant. And then slowly turn it off. And open the hydrant all the way. Okay, and you can always check these caps if they're leaking a little. Snug them up. The next thing we're going to do is set up our case to do our test with. Let's screw this cap off. And we're going to install the cable for the handheld unit. It's indexed, so there's a place for it to slide right in. And then just tighten it down. And then we plug the handheld unit in on the bottom. The arrow goes up, and it just snaps on. Okay, the first thing we want to do is, is set up a hydrant if we haven't set one up. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new hydrant. So once I turn the computer on, I get a splash screen, I push any key, and it takes me to a screen called Choose Test Hydrant. In here, I'm going to add a new hydrant. There's, there's uh, little yellow boxes along the bottom that line up with the F keys on the handheld. The F1 key is for adding a new hydrant. So I'm going to go ahead and push that, and it allows me to add a new alphanumeric uh, hydrant. Uh, to use the alphabet side of the keyboard, I shift up. The top half of the keys then uh, work as letter keys. Uh, to use the symbols, I would shift off. The number key always works as numbers regardless. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to add an alphanumeric hydrant called Herco dash H5 for hydrant 5. And the next thing I'm going to go is I'm going to select the size that I'm going to be testing off of, which is going to be the 2 inch. We're going to be using a 2 inch pedalless nozzle working off the 2 and a half inch side of the fire hydrant. You simply do that by using the up and down arrows. And then next, a preferred flow hydrant. If you haven't predetermine this ahead of time you can add one. I set this up as hydrant 5. We'll do the next hydrant down as hydrant H3. And now I've created a preferred hydrant. Once that's entered, I simply hit next and it goes to the next screen. And it asks for a control valve ID. If there happened to be a valve out here in the street, I could look at it. That's south. So if I have a control ID number, I would enter it here. So I'm going to enter in a test. Uh, T test 1. And then it is a control valve. The direction um, is south. I simply change that by using the up and down arrows. And then I could measure from the center of the hydrant to the center of the valve. In this example, I'm going to leave it at 12 feet. We have that as a default, and that's generally um, pretty close, 12 to 13 feet. 
Next one is, I can look at the hydrant and take some notes on it. It's, a, uh, it's got one pumper, four and a half inch, uh, so I can go through and I can change that. Um, it's got two flow nozzles on it. Uh, so I'll change that to two, and they're 2.5 inch. And I change all those just by using the up and down arrows. Once that's entered, I press next, and I can pick a brand. Uh, this happens to be an American, which was our first default on here, but there are no other manufacturers in here. You just scroll through the list. There's also a model, an area where you can enter a model. If you've pre-entered it, that would just show up here. If you haven't entered it, you would uh, just key it in. Uh, it is an active fire hydrant. It does not have vandal proof um, features on it, so we'll leave that at no. On the next screen, we have the location. We're on the north side, approximately mid-block. We use the, uh, in fact, it's the first one that came up, north side mid-block. Uh, we can use an address. This address happens to be 200, and the street is industrial. If there had been a cross street here that I wanted to reference, I could also enter that. At that point, I've entered in all the hydrant data. I just hit finish, and I'm ready to start testing the fire hydrant. So at this point, um, it has selected the hydrant I just created. I simply press next, and I want to get a GPS location on this fire hydrant. So the way I do that is I flip this switch on the side up to GPS. And I want reasonably accurate GPS. This is a GPS antenna. It can be removed and set up there. You can just set the case there. And on your handheld, you're going to see the GPS coordinates and you're going to see an H-DOP and a V-DOP figure. When those numbers are fairly stable and small, then I can go ahead on the keypad and push F1 to lock the position of this fire hydrant. All right. That, uh, that, that not only comes in handy for mapping reasons, but when we come back to retest this hydrant, we can use GPS to identify the hydrant so we don't have to look at a map. So once the GPS has been locked, all I do is turn this back to sensors, <coughs> and GPS has been recorded on that fire hydrant. All right, so the next thing we do is we're going to activate the test, which is the F3 key. When I push activate, you'll see a flashing word that says activating. As soon as it's activated, it'll say activated and it's going to show us the current pressure in the main. Right now that happens to be 56.7739. Okay, so we want to lock that and remember static pressure. So the F3 key now becomes a key we use to um, lock static pressure. So I just locked static, static pressure at 56.83. So we're ready to move on to the next hydrant. So I'm going to push next, and that's going to take us to hydrant H3. It's going to ask us if H3 is the hydrant we want to use. And it says it's not in our directory, but we'd like to add it now. We can either add it, just like we did the test hydrant, or we can wait and add it later. Um, for now, I'm going to put no. And we're going to move down to the next hydrant, H3.